America's cities, heartbeat of a nation. For centuries, people have migrated to urban areas in search of work and culture. To put down roots and raise a family. To find shelter and build community. Since the 1960s, Residents in cities throughout America have been joining together to create community organizations and community development corporations focused on the most urgent needs of their neighborhoods. For more than 30 years, this unnoticed movement has been taking hold in hundreds of places. Struggling against what seem like insurmountable odds, these modern-day heroes are changing the face of their neighborhoods their communities and their cities, one block at a time. The face of poverty is so different from a city to city, but I think it is very important under these times of limited resources that City Hall sends the signal to the neighborhoods that we care about uh, your interests, uh, that we want to empower the neighborhoods, and that we believe that the best way of approaching this is to be a partner and not try to do, uh, direct it from the top down. The bottom line for me is that if you're going to transform a city, you've got to do it neighborhood by neighborhood. You've got to do it block by block. Rescuing Communities, One Block at a Time, by grassroots community efforts. Is it really possible? In thousands of neighborhoods across the country, residents are proving that it is, restoring hope to where it was all but lost. And if these neighborhood groups can truly make life better, how do they get started? On the south side of Indianapolis, in an area heavily populated by the elderly and the working poor, a Community Development Corporation, or CDC, began not long ago with a staff of one. Okay, so the owner boards it up and keeps it secure. That's the Concord Community Development Corporation came into existence because the residents wanted activity in this neighborhood. The critical component to community development is that the community begins to dream and envision about what they want their area to look like. And then, learning how to partner and to talk and learn from other people, they figure out how to get there. They figure out how to get there. Like all community-based groups, Concord formed partnerships with public and private organizations. With seed money from the city and a neighborhood housing group, Concord was able to begin construction their first summer on two new homes. New construction in an area where nothing had been built for over 100 years. Once that occurred, people began to get so excited about the possibilities that were here because they never believed new houses could come. So here, the first summer that we existed, two new houses right on their block and it was everything that we needed to do. It was the kickstart that the neighbors needed to believe again. On the other end of the spectrum from Concord is New Community Corporation in Newark, New Jersey, one of the grandfathers of the community development movement. From a fledgling group with a single employee, New Community has grown over the past 30 years to a multifaceted organization, ranging in services from daycare to ownership of a large shopping center. With over a $100 million annual budget, they employ more than 1,400 people in a variety of businesses and services. It took us a long time to get the size we are now. The value here is that the people are much more important, and so all the other pieces, you're more apt to try to make it work. You'll do things that you would not do in ordinary business to make it work.
While housing remains the primary activity for most of these community groups, these neighborhood entrepreneurs are spurring economic growth by developing commercial and retail properties, tackling crime by organizing neighborhood block watches, attacking unemployment by providing job training, encouraging small businesses through micro-loan programs, providing daycare for working parents, beautifying neighborhoods. In general, reweaving the fraying social fabric of community. The language, the values, the culture, the spirit of the community, the faith uh, that exists here are very strong assets. The challenge is to build a community, to build a healthy community, not to move to one. Although community groups are locally based and controlled, they are also part of a national movement which combines the efforts of residents with all levels of government, business, and philanthropy. There are more than 80,000 full-time jobs, approximately 500,000 units of affordable housing, and well over 25 million square feet of industrial and commercial space that has been developed by the more than 3,000 community development organizations across the country. No place is this revitalization more visible than in New York's South Bronx, where community groups working together are reversing decay with success unimaginable only 20 years ago. In the end, it is through community development efforts that residents, working as partners with business and government, have awakened a sense of hope and are fulfilling possibilities in their own lives and in thousands of communities across America. The revitalization is a spirit. It's a spirit in the people that says, let's change it. When I go talk to other mayors about working in some of the uh, desperately poor communities, I remind them that there are people there that really want to do right, who are strong, and so you should rely on them and count your blessings and build on that. I think that that's the heart of justice, where the people on the local level really have to begin to get involved, and that there'll be no success unless they are.